Yes, I am aware that Minecraft 1.19.1 is out. By the time you're seeing this video, I hope that basically every mod is updated for the new release, but I'm not completely sure. Anyway, let's start. Since Minecraft really began to take shape, the game's performance has slowly been decreasing. The majority of Minecraft players are likely playing on less powerful machines than your favorite YouTubers are. Since my PC is more of a mid-range rig, what's possible here? Well, when I'm using the default settings with the F3 menu open, I can still pull in a very solid 200 FPS. But as soon as you switch your settings to more ideal values and start to do bigger tasks, the frame rate begins to tank. This is common, and I'm sure that every Minecraft player has experienced these issues before. But let's just say that with the mod set that I'll be showing off, I get over triple that amount. Now that's what I call a great experience. But how do I do it? Let's begin by installing the mod loader. Start up your Minecraft launcher and load up 1.19. Once the game boots to the title, close it and head to the QuiltMC website linked in the resources document down below. Download Quilt and run the installer. Select 1.19 and install it. If you didn't start 1.19 before like I showed you, then you'll probably get an error. But anyway, open up your launcher and head to installations. Click on the brand new Quilt profile and click the browse button. Create a new folder in the .minecraft folder and call it something memorable. Open that folder and create a folder called mod. In that mods folder, drag all of the mods that you want to use into the folder and boot up the game. You do have to configure your keybinds and settings again, but they won't mess with your normal settings ever. Also know that all shaders, resource packs, and worlds that you want to use have to be dragged into the new folder to show up. But what do these mods do, and how do they triple your frame rate? Well, let's start with that now. The way to squeeze the best possible performance out of your game is by using the Sodium mod. You may have heard about it by now, but it's the most light way to boost your frame rate on any computer. You could technically get away with just Sodium, but this video is about quality of life mods. Anyway, opening a new world with Sodium installed and unlimiting your frame rate should immediately show results. The video settings menu is also redesigned and you do have a little bit more control over what your game looks like. Throw in Lithium and Starlight and you've got quite the set of performance mods on hand. Starlight optimizes Minecraft's lighting engine while Lithium optimizes game mechanics like mob AI. Something I also like is this mod that changes up Sodium's video settings shape a little bit but keeps the general theme intact. It's especially nice if you use a small GUI scale but you should never use this. Why would you use this? Next thing to add is Ferrite Core, which reduces Minecraft's memory usage. Depending on what you're doing, the difference may be minimal, but it will never negatively impact your gameplay. Also add Entity Culling to prevent entities that aren't in view from rendering to save FPS. Smooth Boot and Lazy DFU will likely be a lifesaver for people who have slow CPUs because these mods reduce CPU usage when the game loads. Tooltip Fix, Language Reload, and Memory Leak Fix just patch a couple of bugs here and there to fix the little things. And Krypton is there to optimize Minecraft's network working stack. If I'm being honest, I don't really know what that is, but you're welcome to read about it. Alright, that's it for the performance mods. Let's cover the rest of the mods, which improve your overall Minecraft experience. Slight GUI Modifications is a mod that does exactly what it says on the tin. It changes some minor elements of Minecraft's user interface, but I basically only use it for the right-click functions. Better Ping Display implements the feature that Mojang is taking their sweet, sweet time on, and allows you to see other people's ping in actual comprehensible Arabic numerals in your tab list. Also, in the Dragon clip that you just saw, I used the Forge version. Yeah, I'm a bit of an idiot. Continuity implements connected textures into the game without the use of Optifine. All you need to do is apply the built-in resource packs to the top of your list and you're ready to go. Additionally, you can use Optifine connected texture resource packs with it and they will work as intended. Be sure to check that the pack you want to use actually supports the Optifine format though. Next is Don't Clear Chat History, a straightforward mod that prevents your chat history from being cleared when you switch between servers and worlds. Combine this with the More Chat History mod and essentially all of your chat history is logged throughout your entire game session. Dynamic Dynamic FPS is a smart mod that reduces your game's frame rate when you're tabbed out. Since you usually aren't focusing on your game's window when you're doing other things on your computer, it's beneficial to save energy and reduce the game's performance when it's not necessary to render all of those frames. It can also mute sounds when you're tabbed out too. And even when you hover your cursor over the game window, the performance increases again even if you don't actually click in. I'll quickly cover World Edit, which I also have in my mods folder. I just use it for creative mode as you can't actually use it in survival without enabling cheats, but it's useful for map making. Now for a big mod, Iris. Iris is a mod that adds shader support with sodium. This is the best way to use shaders while having the highest possible frame rate. At this point, it's compatible with every single popular shader pack and it's being updated all of the time. And it basically relies off of sodium for good performance. So at this point, there's no reason not to use sodium, but that's Iris. Logical Zoom is a simple mod that adds Optifine zoom function to the game without actually using Optifine. There is a mod called OK Zoomer that adds more customization to the zoom function, but I've never really cared about all of the options. You're welcome to use it if you like them, but logic 
logical zoom is always something that I come back to. Mini HUD is the coordinate mod that I've used in basically every single one of my videos. While it's actually capable of much more than just showing coordinates, it's the most useful function in my opinion. It can actually do so much that I think it would warrant its own video. But if you want to be like me, you can just download my config file to use only the coordinates. The way to import this is to just drag it into the config folder in your performance mods directory. If you don't end up using my config, boot up the game and press H and C in game to open up the configuration. If you do use my config, press left shift H and C. Then from there, you can do anything you want. I would recommend changing the keybinds to fit your desires. Mod menu does what fabric and quilt should probably already do, and it adds a mods button to your main menu and your game menu. With the assistance of some mods that I'll show at the end of the video, you can use this mod to configure basically any mod that needs to be configured. I would recommend changing these settings in mod menu's config. Not Enough Crashes is a helpful mod that can stop your game from completely closing when it crashes. It doesn't always work, but when it does, you can click a button to go right back to the main menu and keep playing. Replay Mod is a mod that is basically every Minecraft YouTuber's dream. At any point, you can record everything that's going on around you and watch it again later. This is also useful for creating cinematic background footage, which I do absolutely all of the time in my videos now. Using Iris and a compatible version of Sodium, you can render some beautiful scenes in-game. Rendering scenes can take a while depending on how intense your settings are, but it'll all Always be worth it. I've got two mods left, and they're honestly the holy grail in my opinion. The first one is the 51418 mod. This mod undoes the fix that Mojang did for this bug in the bug tracker. If you don't know what MC51418 was, it basically allowed you to open up your options file and change your settings outside of their intended values. The most common use of this was increasing your brightness to see better in game. Mojang then went ahead and fixed this bug in 1.19, causing any modifications to round back to their intended values. But this extremely simple mod unfixes the bug and lets you change the file again. And the second mod is the Technoblade Pig mod, because why not, right? Also, you need these mods for a lot of the other ones to work, especially cloth configs, so you can do this. But more info on why you need these in the description. Thanks for watching, and enjoy your new frame rate.